Hey friends, Peggy Hall back with you from thehealthyamerican.org. I'm so grateful to be invited to speak at different places around the country. I usually stay a little closer to home. In fact, I'm going to be speaking at a women's Republican meeting in Fullerton, California. But several weeks ago, I was invited to speak in Tennessee at a Freedom Festival, and I was unable to attend, but I did create a presentation that I'm about to share with you now. So I thought it would be a good idea to reuse this information so that you could see the message that I was sharing with the good people of Tennessee who are standing up for their freedom. And of course, there's great news coming out of Tennessee when it comes to keeping the air clean and taking action against the spraying of the skies. I'll be doing a different video for you on that topic, but I did want to bring you the encouragement that I sent to the people for their Freedom Festival, so I hope you'll enjoy. Hey friends, it's Peggy Hall here from The Healthy American. I'm so honored to be a part of your Freedom Festival, and I hope that next year I'll be able to attend in person. At The Healthy American, I have been at the helm of truth and freedom, and over the last several years, along with my husband, Pastor David, we have helped thousands and thousands of people keep their job without the jab. We have actually turned back the mask requirements in Orange County, California, my home county, and we were also able to put a stop to their vaccine passports that they wanted to impose upon the population. Now, you may be like me, and perhaps you never attended a board of supervisor meeting or any other school board meeting up until all of this hogwash that they sloshed all over us. But I certainly went into high gear when I realized that tyranny and oppression were unfolding right in front of my eyes. Now, maybe you were like me and you were trying to educate people on Facebook. <laughs> I'll tell you, that was a big mistake. People didn't want to hear the truth. They didn't want to see the facts. They didn't want to look at the research that I dug up that showed that there was no legitimate authority for shutting down states and for closing schools and closing businesses and basically oppressing you and taking away your rights. So my background is actually in political science and international policy, but you don't need a background in political science to know that these measures, I'm never going to call them mandates because a mandate is not a law. That was another way that they were trying to bamboozle and hoodwink and dupe us into believing that what an unelected health officer told you to do was the law and it wasn't. So I got so frustrated <laughs> trying to talk sense into people on Facebook. My husband looked at me and said, sweetheart, what are you doing arguing with people on Facebook? It's like a dive bar. It's like a bar brawl in there. No one wants to hear what you have to say. If you want to educate people on the law and on their rights, why don't you make a video on YouTube? People go to YouTube because they want to learn something. And that's exactly what I did. I published my first video and it was called why the emergency in California is illegitimate, invalid, null and void. And I set about to break down the Emergency Services Act in California. And I showed very clearly that the conditions that we had in California did not meet the definitions of the law. And to this day, we have never been in a legitimate emergency. Now, I just need to give you a little an, an aside here. My county, Orange County, California, is still under a COVID emergency. Yes, I said it. I'm actually suing the county because they have been holding meetings in secret where the law requires them to hold these meetings in public. In fact, they even looked around the room at each other and said, we're not going to end this emergency because if we do that, we will no longer get money. And I need to tell you that the chairman of that board of supervisors, Andrew Doe, is being investigated now because he basically did money laundering to the tune of, oh, let's round it out to $14 million that he gave to his daughter, who out of thin air as a 22-year-old, never having a job before, created her own nonprofit and all of these millions of dollars of our tax dollars and the money that they print out of thin air was funneled into this organization. And I've had my Healthy American research team calling that outfit and they don't answer the phone. There's nothing on the website saying how they spent their money. And so the fraud and the corruption goes very, very deep. I am suing the county for them to 
legitimately end the emergency. And it is one of the most important lawsuits that is ongoing now. And by ongoing, we're going into three years. And this is how those uh, circus clowns at the courts are trying to drag it out. They're trying to drain my pockets. They're trying to psychologically wear me down. And I am never going to give up. I'm on record saying I am marching this all the way to heaven. I am requesting the judge to issue a ruling that says the county has to follow the law in an emergency, in an emergency. The law was written to tell them what to do in an emergency. And they said, we don't have to follow it because it's an emergency. This is the level of corruption that we're dealing with. And it's so very important because this county is saying that they are going to wait for the governor to tell them what to do. Well, you know, and I know that that is a totalitarian dictatorship when you have one man rule. This case is very important. If you'd like to learn more about it, I have an entire playlist on my YouTube channel, which is The Healthy American Peggy Hall. I would love to see you there. I've got a whole laundry list of things that are bothering me, and I want to share a few of them with you. And then I'm all about strategies and solutions. I do not care for the YouTubers who put you in the spin cycle and hang you out to dry, fomenting more fear and dread. I call it uh, not only fear mongering, it's flu mongering, like the uh, public serpents, as I call them, because they're serving evil that they have been doing over these last several years. So I'll talk about some solutions as well. And I, I did want to finish off by saying in Orange County and in California, we have a very active freedom movement. People think that California is liberal. It is not. It is a conservative state by and large. Yes, the cities have been taken over by the liberals, basically people that are not thinking. They're not asking. They're not researching. They're just accepting what the government tells them, and they are shirking their God-given individual rights, liberty, and responsibility. And that's exactly what I stand for, is independent um, thought and responsibility. I'm not responsible for your health. Your doctor's not responsible for your health. Only you are responsible for your health. Why should I put on a raincoat to keep someone else dry? All of those things should be our own personal choice. So in Orange County and in California, every county has been very active. And in the hardest hits, hit counties like uh, Los Angeles and San Diego, there are very active freedom groups. And we have pushed back and gotten rid of the suffocation devices, as I call them, at the public schools. I have helped people keep their jobs open legally because they were shutting them down thinking that that was a law and they had to follow it. I have helped countless college students be able to continue their studies without having to become a human pincushion and participate in this medical experiment. I've helped people in the military stay in their ranks without getting these, uh, you know, discharges, which now, as you know, the military is saying, oh, we made a mistake. Please come back. And most of them aren't. Uh, I've helped people from all different branches of uh, working in the federal government. I've even had people from the CDC and the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission and the FDA and the Department of Homeland Security reach out for my help, along with my husband, Pastor David, to help them understand their rights when it comes to their religious beliefs. And I will say that this push to eliminate our religious rights is starting in these woke places. I call them the woke place. And I am fighting against it. I'm standing against it. And we are seeing the tide turning in our favor because these diversity and equity and inclusion operations are now being uh, reduced at many of these places. So I'm happy to see that there is a lot of light at the end of the tunnel. And of course, victory is ours. We know that because the truth is on our side. The law is on our side and Jesus Christ is on our side. So let me just talk about a little laundry list of things that are troubling me and uh, kind of an overall approach for what we can do. I don't know if you've looked up lately, and I don't know if you have blue skies in Tennessee, but we have milky skies in California. You rarely see the sun anymore. And I have done a series of videos, if you're interested in learning more, about why these are not contrails from jets. These are uh, persistent 
poisoning of the sky. And part of it is to block out the sun. And there are many people, including Bill Gates, who is actually giving millions of dollars to Harvard University to uh, fund this research into solar radiation management. Now, I take a front at this because it's almost as if they want to play God, not as if they want to play God, just like they want to play God with manipulating our DNA. Uh, and, um, oh, I forgot to tell you, everybody, this might come as a shock to you, but I am fully immunized. I am fully immunized by the blood of Jesus Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit. God did not make a mistake when he created our bodies to ward off disease and illness. And I put my trust in him. Yes. Oh, I also needed to tell you that I actually have a medical condition that prevents me from wearing that suffocation device. Yes. It's called breathing. <laughs> you see, <laughs> the good Lord above created two airways, our nose and our mouth. And I'm certainly not going to cover either one of those. All right. I need to breathe in God's breath of life and I will never restrict it. Hashtag never have, never will participated in any of it. All right. What else is really bothering me? This, um, Escorted migration, that's how I call it, because these are not people that are escaping uh, their countries. They are being escorted into this country with your tax dollars and my tax dollars and the money that they print out of thin air. This is troubling on so many accounts, and I know that you know what is going on, and we need to stand against this. I believe that we are going to have a clean sweep in the elections coming up. And I love what Trump said, that we need these elections to be too big to rig. Do not give up, give over, and give in to the desire to not vote. That's exactly what the bad guys want, the public serpents and the evildoers. I vote and I can stand in dignity and integrity knowing that I took action. Another thing that's on my list is this lack of judicial integrity. In other words, kangaroo courts. I'm seeing that in my own lawsuit in Orange County. I am on my fourth judge. The first judge ruled in my favor and ordered the county to hold its meeting as required by the law. They were supposed to come back in three months and show that they held the meeting. Meeting. Well, we had a new judge on the case three months later who was too confused and couldn't figure out our case. And it's been going on for three years. We've had four changes of judges. And as I mentioned, that Andrew Doe, the chairman of the Board of Supervisors, it just turns out his wife, what a coincidence, his wife is the second highest uh, judge in the County of Orange. How do you like them apples? Yeah, it's, this is the same fellow that funneled the $14 million to his 22-year-old daughter's nonprofit that she just made up out of thin air. You know what's going on in the courts. You can see what's happening to Trump. It literally is a witch hunt. And this is something that I pray for daily. There have been good rulings coming out of certain federal courts. And this is why voting is so important and holding these uh, officials, holding their feet to the fire, literally. All right, uh, we're seeing weather manipulation, all right? This might be a controversial topic, but I do believe that these storms that we are seeing, the storms, the droughts, the floods, the fires, do not look natural to me. Again, I've got an entire playlist if you would like to do a deep dive on this. And there's not much that I can personally do about it other than expose the evildoers and help educate people so that they can see that what we're being shown does not match up with natural fires in the case of California. All right, one thing that we know is driving all of this is globalism and what I call the new world disorder. Yes, our friends there, Nasal Schwab, that's another little nickname that I have for our uh, friends over at the new world. Uh, actually, it's the World Economic Forum. Yeah, the WEFers and their friends trying to push through the new world disorder. Uh, that is something that I've also spoken out against. And I know many people are exposing that as well to defund the WHO, who, by the way, has no legitimate authority in our country. But I will tell you this, whether or not the WHO tries to inflict its uh, nefarious dealings upon us, it's up to each individual to stand strong. Whether or not the United Nations is marching in, whether or not those uh, injections are still on the pharmaceutical shelves, the pharmacy shelves, I am not going to participate. It is up to each one of us 
to stand in liberty, dignity, and freedom, and to take those actions that align with our values. All right. What about this gender mutilation that is going on? Now, the good news is in California, we have an action that's going on right now, and it is a referendum, which means we, the people in California, have the ability to put to a vote, a new law, and that is to ban all of the gender mutilation surgeries for children. Can you believe we're even having this conversation? Lord, help us. This literally comes from the enemy that wants to destroy God's greatest creation, which is humanity. It's not the earth. <laughs> yes, God created the earth for us. And the evil doers want to mock, intimidate, and manipulate and uh, mutilate our children. In California, we are standing against it. We are protecting the children by working to get this initiative, excuse me, I called it a referendum, it's initiative on the ballot. And this is to prevent the not only the gender surgeries, but also the giving of hormones to children. And if they're 18 and they wanna make these choices, uh, you know, may the Lord be with them in their struggles, but children, we draw the line. So we are working, uh, very hard in California to put a stop to this. As I say, most people in California are conservative, small business owners. They want to work hard, be left alone by the government. And, uh, I do believe that we are going to see the pendulum swing even in California. All right. Trying Here's another one on my list. Trying to normalize the killing of developing babies in the womb and calling it healthcare, calling it a right. Well, we have a right and we have a right to life. And all life is sacred at every stage of development. I am 100% against this idea that, well, you can uh, have an abortion up to six weeks. So prior to six weeks, that developing life didn't have value. I know we there are states that are pushing back against this, but the normalization of this is what we need to fight against. We are hearing that this abortion is safe and effective. Well, not very safe for the baby. The governor of California took out billboards in states, probably in Tennessee, in uh, South Carolina, in Alabama, in Indiana, I believe, with billboards using Bible verses to promote the murder of babies. We are face to face with evil, my friends. So many people spoke out against that. And evil carries within itself seeds of destruction. Victory is ours, and we need to continue to expose the evildoers. What about these orchestrated events designed to take away the guns? Yes, we've seen them in every state and we will continue to see more of them. Why were, didn't we see these events when Trump was president? I ask you. My view is that the evidence shows that these are either false flags or psyops. I've broken down several of them on my channel. You can also follow me on Rumble because a lot of the videos on YouTube don't stay up that long because uh, they are at risk of getting me a strike. So if you're interested in that, and if you know that a lot of these things don't add up, you can learn more by following those videos. Uh, what about the coerced speech? Not only censored speech, but coerced speech, where people are being forced to say and do things that they don't believe. What about the cake bakers that are being sued because they will not bake a wedding cake for a same-sex marriage? Now. This baker will give any kind of cake that this same-sex couple would like, but she will not make a wedding cake because that is coerced speech. Imagine uh, a German person going to a Jewish bakery and wanting a birthday cake that celebrates Hitler's birthday. Do you think that, I'm just using an example of how we cannot be coerced into expressing something that we don't believe. It is a very slippery slope. And these bad guys, the, the uh, evildoers and the public serpents work through incrementalism, thinking that we are not 
watching, but we are. All right. The corrupt selections. Does your vote count? It may or may not. But as I mentioned earlier, I am voting. It is a right that I have. And I will not give in, give up and give that over to the evildoers and make it easier for them to steal the elections. Here's something you can do right off the bat. Work within your own county. Demand paper ballots. You need to get this to your uh, in your action groups. Same day voting, in-person voting, voter ID. We're seeing in Arizona that that's coming through. And these ballots need to be counted in a transparent manner, in a bipartisan way, with eyeballs on those ballots. Otherwise, it's going to be very, very difficult to have legitimate elections, but I will not give up that right. There is medical coercion still going on where people are finding it difficult to get their treatments because they have not become a human pincushion. We need to continue to speak out against this. Friends, I have a lot of free resources over at thehealthyamerican.org. I would love for you to get on my free Substack. It's peggyhall.substack.com. Dot com And I have so much of this in a written format that you can refer to. Let me speak about what we can do about this. Evil wants us to be exasperated. And we need to continue to say engaged and empowered and encouraged. And that's exactly what I seek to do uh, through the work that I do, whether it's these uh, speeches and public events and gatherings, or whether it's through my YouTube channel or the Substack. I'm grateful that God called me to do this work as he had for as he has for you. So number one, we have to no longer be asleep at the wheel. We have to face the reality of what is. And we do this by digging deeper. I know that you're not watching mainstream, you know, uh, <laughs> merry-go-round media because you won't find it there. And of course we need to dig deeper and make sure that what we are seeing and reading and learning is also not being tainted by the controlled opposition. And they are out there where they will spoon feed you 99 truths to slip in one lie. Friends, it's the oldest trick in the book. It's called deception. The entire Bible is dedicated to discerning truth from deception. So we need to be uh, awake and aware and alert to all of that. Even those that are calling them freedom fighter, calling themselves freedom fighters, dig deeper, look to see what might be their hidden agenda. All right. Uh, I've got really three main simple things that you can do. And so much can fall under that. So it's what you're doing right now at the Freedom Festival. And the simple pillars of my platform are connection, education, and action. So being connected with like-minded people. Remember in the early days of the hogwash, they told everybody to stay home, to isolate. Now that was not to keep people healthy. It was actually to demoralize them, to harm their spirit. Closing churches, they should have churches open 24 seven, even more so because people needed spiritual care for the soul. So they were out to get us and many fell for it, hook, line, and sinker, because they were isolated. They didn't know where to turn. They couldn't connect with others, and they were living in fear. I live in faith. The good Lord above knows the number of my days, and so I'm not going to live in fear worrying about that. In fact, people weren't afraid to die. Didn't it seem like they were afraid to live by locking themselves into their homes? Nobody came around with a key. We had the right to leave, and I certainly did. So connect connect, connect. At this event here, I would love for you to go home with uh, five or 10 new contacts, emails, cell phones, connect offline so that you don't have to worry about the censorship. So connection is key. You will feel supported. I'm never going to say that we're all in it together because we all have different experiences, but we are standing shoulder to shoulder and we can support each other when the going gets tough. Now, the other thing is education, and that is so important. Knowledge is power. And the more that you can go to the original sources, not the mainstream media, and maybe not even the videos on Rumble. For example, 
when there is a Supreme Court ruling, I don't go to ABC News. I go to the Supreme Court and I actually read the ruling. And then I might go to ABC News to see how they spin it, but try to go to the original source as much as possible. So that's where you can increase your knowledge. The other benefit of focusing on knowledge and education is that it takes you out of the spin cycle. You get out of the emotional realm and you get more into your intellectual uh, power, the mental aspect, and that can help you reduce the amount of emotion that these bad guys want to do, because that's exactly how they trap us. They trap us through fear, through confusion, through isolation, and then they inflict their new agenda, as I call it. And we can see that that's happening in California. So we need to get out of that fear and out of the dread and out of the spin. And the one of the best ways I know how to do that is with my third pillar, which is action, taking action, even if it doesn't yield the results. I'm in a three year long lawsuit that has drained my pocketbook. It has been very uh, demanding, but I am so glad that I did it regardless of the result. I know that I took action in a way that I knew how. Now we do have an upcoming hearing in April. And all we're asking is for the judge to rule that the county has to follow the emergency laws during an emergency. I know it sounds like there's more to that, but that's all it is. And of course, they're doubling down and trying to extend this and draw it out as long as they can. But at least I took action. You're taking action by being here. And that is so important. You feel empowered instead of powerless. You feel like the victor instead of the victim. And it can inspire others to take action as well. Not everybody wants to make a video. Not everybody wants to speak at an event, but you can share videos. You can have conversations with others and you can do what God calls you to do. Prayer is powerful. It goes without saying that that is the foundation of everything I do. And God has called you to this work. And he has called me as well. And I want to let you know that I am marching this all the way to heaven. And I have a feeling that you are as well. Thank you. God bless you. Have a wonderful event. And I look forward to seeing you in person at the next Freedom Festival.